Shalom family, shalom. I am back again today and I want to talk about um, what we left off in the last video when we were talking about the bloodline of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. And right after I made the video, I had went back to type in the description about how mother was confirming that Mary Magdalene was his wife. As we've been discussing, they've changed a lot of genders um, in the scripture, which has been causing a lot of confusion. And I want to actually show you uh, the confusion that it causes and show you that it does say that she was his wife. Now, I started yesterday just going over the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, um, which I thought I previously read, but it was years ago, so I probably wasn't grasping it <clears throat> the way that I'm grasping it now. Now, I know you guys are probably looking at the title of this video, which I think I'm going to call this video um, Mary Magdalene, The Rock or tower versus peter the rock the vatican okay because what the messiah was saying in the scripture was that he was going to build his church on mary magdalene who was also a rock she's a, a, a tower and we're going to get all of this in the scripture um so the messiah was basically being sarcastic with peter and saying because he know his name is rock saying peter on this rock and we'll get into that. But before we get there, uh, I want to read you guys the status that I had posted yesterday. And I just noticed that I did it at exactly 333, which is so crazy. So, um, and it's the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Now, this is the ending of it. It was a lot previously. Um, which we can go over. another time but the main point i want to get to is this so it's a gospel of mary magdalene so it's a come to me you who desire me and eat your fill of my fruits for memory of me is sweeter than honey now this is wisdom now we've already discussed that she's the tree of life that's proverbs 3 i believe for she is the tree of life to those who take hold of her um, so come to me, you who desire me and eat your fill of my fruits for member memory of me is sweeter than honey and the possession of me is sweeter than the honeycomb. Those who eat of me will hunger for more and those who drink of me will thirst for more. Now, when I was reading that immediately, John 19 popped in my head which is the scripture that I posted in the description. And it reads, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy daughter okay now there i did change the genders back because they put behold thy son okay now now let's envision this okay because when we read and we need to envision this we need to be there go to that place okay close your eyes if you must <laughs> but look so they want to make it like they was talking that he was talking about the disciple John, which he wasn't. He was talking about Mary Magdalene, where it said, "Now thereby stood there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene." Now this is the depiction of the triple goddess. Okay, Mary, 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 and they say when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved which is Mary Magdalene. He said unto his mother, woman, behold thy daughter. Then saith to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into her own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Okay, I thirst. What was he thirsting for? 
Mary Magdalene. Wisdom, as we've been talking to you guys, represents is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is represented in the flesh by your wife. I don't know why this is hard for um, some people to understand. So wisdom is represented in the flesh by your wife. So he's saying, he said, I thirst. Now wisdom saith, those and those who drink of me will thirst for more. Okay. And I, I was just discussing this with somebody. I, I gave them a scripture, um, Proverbs 8. She says, those who find of me find of life. Okay. The scripture say that's your wife. It say, take fast hold of her for she is thy life, your wife. So she said, those who find me find life. Um, and obtain a favor of the Lord. Another passage in Proverbs tells you, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favors of the Lord. It's, it's, it's puzzle pieces that you must put together, which we, we discussed about this. So he said, if I thirst, he thirsted for Mary Magdalene. Okay. That's what he was thirsting for. The waters of life, which we've discuss that the water represents the wife okay the woman at the well the fountain the well the waters okay so now that we've went over that and got that established i want to talk about the rock that he built his church on which was mary magdalene we need to understand this okay before we get into the revelations 13 breakdown so um when we break down the beast and we're going to talk about exactly what that beast is compromised of so it says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philip, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay. Now, when he was saying the Son of the living God, he didn't understand that he was referencing Mary Magdalene. Okay. Because it's a rebirth through the truth. Now, the Holy Spirit, okay, who was mother and wife. It's a, it's a weird thing. Now, I was reading, and it's, it's a very symbolic thing. It's not literal. It don't mean the mothers marry their sons, okay? In Isaiah 62, it tells us, and you shall marry your sons. This is the Revelations 12 woman and the man child that she births. But these are husband and wives. They're not literal mothers and children and etc it's just a very symbolic image and it's compared to like that because the women rep are the holy spirit who was the mother of us jerusalem who was the mother of us all she inhabits these daughters as vessels okay so it's 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 a twofold so and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barhana, for, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my mother, which is in heaven. So he said flesh and blood. So we know we not. he's not talking about Mary. One second, guys. Okay, so... I'm back. So I say, um, have not revealed it to you, but my mother, which is in heaven. Okay. Now, this is reference um, to his wife because your wife represents the Holy Spirit on earth. Okay. Um, in the flesh. Okay. And Malachi 2 actually referenced this. That Adam, when the breath was blown into him, that that actually represented Eve that brought him to life. Your wife is thy life. Okay. When God divided Adam, he, when God made Eve, what he did was she was the spirit. He took of Adam's flesh. Okay. And I've said this before in videos 
and gave Eve of his flesh, which is why Adam said, you are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Okay. But however, Eve was the spirit and Malachi two tells you this Malachi um, two references God saying that Adam received a residue of the spirit. Okay. And that the spirit is his wife is the wife. Okay. So let's continue. Um, so I say, so then it goes to say, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, what is the Messiah really saying here? As I told y'all, he's being sarcastic towards Peter because Peter's name is the rock, but we can see Peter's name is 4074, but the rock he's building it on is 4073. And we're going, we're going to get into those definitions. So he's, it's a play on words, rock and rock, but he's talking about two different rocks here. This is what we need to understand. And he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against thee. Well, we know Peter's rock or church was um, he was the first Pope. So we would be looking at the Vatican, right? Now let's check this out. Where is it? Mm, I had all the definitions pulled up. Okay. So, uh, 4073 is the word used for for what I'm explaining to you guys is Mary Magdalene. And it's a large mass of rock, a rock, a ledge, a cliff, a cave, a stony ground. So a ledge, a cleft, or like a cliff. So like a mountain, okay, like a tower, a cave, stony ground. Petra, a feminine noun, a mass of connected rock, which is distinct from 40, 4074, which is Peter. Petros, which is a detached stone or boulder. Petra is a solid or native rock rising up through the earth, a huge mass of rock, okay, such as a projecting cliff, okay. Now, I always wondered, um, you, you guys know, like on the Lion King, when, when they hold up Simba, that like cliff, I've seen that in other movies and in music videos. And I've always wondered what it rep represented. Well, I think it's representing this. Okay. Um, Petra's the masculine form, however, is a stone such, uh, okay. It's a projecting rock, a cliff. Feminine now. Now, 4074, Petros, the masculine form, however, is a stone such as a man might throw. So, man throw stones. So, Peter throws stones. Okay, he always came up against Mary Magdalene. And this is one of the things that you'll find when you actually read about the relationship between Peter and Mary Magdalene was that, um, he was one of those type where he felt like the woman should be silent and everything and everything. But the Messiah told, I believe it's a, it's a chapter in here where he said he called Peter a thief, right? Didn't he call Peter a thief when she was, when the woman was anointing um, his, his feet, which I may have been Mary Magdalene as well. And she poured the oil on his feet or whatever. And, and Peter said, oh, we could have got 300 pence or something. And he, and it, 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 it Jackson, it says that he only cared because he was holding the bag and he was a thief. So he was, you know, pocketing money. One second. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look um, for this one. It's a large mass of rock, rocks, rocks, rocky. A uh, feminum of the same as Petros, a mass of rock, literally or figuratively rock. Okay, now let's go to Petros. Petros is a stone or a boulder. Peter, one of the 12 apostles. Now say a stone or a boulder. Peter, one of the 12 apostles. Peter, a Greek name meaning rock. Now it says uh, a 40, 4074 Petros, a masculine noun properly a stone, a pebble, such as a small rock found along a pathway. So Peter is like a small pebble, 
okay? How is the Messiah saying he going to build his church on a small pebble? Okay, he wasn't. He was saying he was going to build it on a protruding rock, okay? The tower. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get some scriptures about this. Sorry, phone call interrupted the video. So, um, as I was saying, Peter is just a, a pebble, such as a small rock found along the pathway. Um, and it says, 4074 Petros, small stone, that stands in contrast to 4073, which is Petra, which is the feminine noun, which would be Mary Magdalene, the tower. Okay, uh, now it says 4074 Petros is an isolated rock and 4073 Petra is a cliff. Okay, 4074 Petros always means a stone such as a man may throw. Okay, so Peter represents a stone like man throwing stones, the accuser. Okay, and the Messiah called him Satan. Okay, in the scripture. Now, am I saying this to say, uh, don't believe none of what Peter's, uh, gospel or whatever it is? No, because I went and reread it after all this came to me. And it's possible that the Holy Spirit used him to deliver a message, but then Satan got a hold of him, okay? So we're not going to just throw Peter's whole doc, uh, gospel away, but we need to know what was going on with Peter, okay? So it's a... It said to throw stone, the accuser. It said, now a king to Petra used as a proper name, a stone or a boulder. Peter, one of the 12 apostles. Peter, Peter. Okay. Peter, rock, apparently a primary word, a piece of rock. Um, as the name, Petrus, an apostle, Peter, rock, compare Kephas. Okay. Cephas. A rock, Cephas, the name given to the Apostle Paul. Okay, now it's now let's go back to the chapter. So we can see that he was saying that he was going to build his his church on the on this rock, Mary Magdalene. Now imagine we all standing there. Close your eyes. <laughs> go close your eyes. Imagine that that it's three people standing there. Stand, imagine you wanted disciples and you all and y'all all standing there, and Jesus is talking to Peter. And he say, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now remember, Mary Magdalene is standing there amongst us. So we got to think of it like that, envision it. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the Vatican, Peter was the first pope, the, the Vatican is the gates of hell. Okay, and I, maybe that's what I should title it, the Vatican, the gates of hell. <laughs> It's not funny, literally. And I will give unto thee. So now he's talking to Mary Magdalene. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged. Then charged he his disciples that they should not tell no man that he was jesus the christ from that time forth began jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto jerusalem and suffer many things the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and raised again the third day then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Now, I tried to look up this word rebuke yesterday, but it wouldn't come up. See, it's still not coming up. And rebuke him, because I think they're high in something there, and saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. <clears throat> but he returned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Okay. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
For whosoever will save his life, his wife, shall lose it, her. And whoever will lose his life, wife, for my sake, shall find her. Those who seek me early shall find me. Okay, so... The Messiah clear as day said, you know, Satan was in him. Satan, get behind me, okay, to Peter. But turn he and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Now, I just want to talk about how we brainwashed, because clear as day, the Messiah called him Satan. It was 12-12. How could we then think a few verses earlier that he was saying that he was going to build his his church on Peter? Now, I want to say that the church represents the body, right? And we talked about the body represents the children, right? So why would he say he having his children with Peter? That's kind of su suspect. He was saying he was having his children with Mary Magdalene. That's what he was saying. Okay, twofold prophecy. So um, that's what he was saying. So let's continue. It's 12, 12. So now the reason why I say stuff like this, remember I was saying uh, the devil is the author of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion, right? So they changed the genders to confuse you. Let's go back to what we was looking at in uh Where was it? Right here. How they changed it and said, then he said, uh, it say, he said, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing by whom he loved, they tried to say that was John, and saith unto his mother, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, say, if I thirst. They try to make Jesus a homosexual. And y'all sitting up here, y'all making him a homosexual too, okay? Because you're reading this and you're not understanding what they did and you're perpetuating the lie. So I want to talk about Young Pharaoh. I don't know if any of you guys know about Young Pharaoh or have watched his video where he was saying Jesus Christ was was a homosexual or gay or and all of that. He actually used this scripture to justify the fact of his belief that Jesus was a homosexual. You see how Satan causes confusion? Okay. That scripture was not about John. It, John was not the disciple whom he loved. That was Mary Magdalene, which as you can see, is the scripture right here that I posted from the gospel of Mary Magdalene and said, Christ loved Mary Magdalene more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on the mouth. The rest of the disciples were offended by it. They said to him, why do you love her more than all of us? Now we went to Matt. We, I went into Matthew 24, nine, where he said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, daughter's sake, which I was a few years ago, I had ran across that Jesus had a daughter. Her name was Sarah or something. I'm not sure. I will have to look back into that. But it could be for my daughter's sake. But as I was contemplating this in my head, the name could also represent the wife for my wife's sake. And you shall be hated of all nations for my wife's sake, Mary Magdalene. And then shall many be of offended why because the rest of the disciples were offended by it offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold um shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come okay so as we talked about in another video that the prophecies can't happen until we speak them into existence and people are thinking that they're speaking the prophecies but they're speaking these homosexual 
uh, things into existence. And then we look around into the earth and we see that we have like these spirits running rampant. Okay. The spirit of air. Okay. It's running rampant. And when we talk about the horror spirit, we, we like to just say that that is a feminine spirit. No, that is a masculine spirit. Uh, the whore spirit and we're going to get into that in revelations when we go over revelations 13 tomorrow so i'm gonna just save that for that um so let's so let's look at something else so how could we think that he was building his church on peter okay let's look at something else because they like to say they like to bring up luke uh i'm sorry they like to um bring up that is say that Mary Magdalene has seven devils and all of that. And I went and read it in Luke 8, I believe it was. And from my understanding, it seems like as we've said <clears throat> that they were changing things once again. And because we the word that they use for devils is 1140. And we just went over this in the 144,000 demonized video. Um when he said, then we cast out devils in thy name. And he said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So it's the same number, 1140, that's used there, um, which means to be demonized, basically, right? And um, so it say, so let's read it. And it's saying, it came to pass afterward that he went, throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the 12 were with him and certain women which had been in a and in, in certain woman which had been women that's actually a plural so it's in certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities And then they try to say Mary Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. But this word women here, W-O-M-E-N, is plural. Woman, W-O-M-A-N, is singular. So they they hide in something here. You see how it don't add up? That's how you can see that they hide something. So what, what actually mother was telling me was Mary called the Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils devils no seven spirits okay because she was representing your holy spirit not seven devils out of whom went seven spirit so we get that word 1140 uh a demonic being which we went over that which means to be uh um demonized okay it gives you devil or god okay so it says it can be the divine power deity divinity a spirit, a being inferior to God, superior to man, evil spirits or the messengers and ministers of the devil. So they want to try to give you three, number three, but no, we're talking about number one and two, a spirit out of whom went seven spirits. Okay. Out of whom went seven spirits. So how do we know this? Because it say which has been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. No, she was healing evil spirits and infirmities because the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, so we can see that they. Okay, give me a second. Go sit down. So we can see. Give me one second, guys. Okay, so it say the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Okay. So let's we can, we can read a little bit about Mary Magdalene, and then we're gonna wrap this up. I just wanted to bring this short video, shorter than my normal videos. Um, before we get into the beast of Revelation 13, because this will help us kind of clarify. And that way I don't have to, you know, be all over the place trying to explain so much at once. So the Vatican the, is the gates of hell. Okay. 
So let's, um, no, that's the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, which I was reading. But I wanted to just read, oh, before we get into it, we talked about uh, it meaning a protruding rock, okay, or an elevated rock or etc. So Mary, uh, we was going to get into the tower. I forgot. Oh, I'm glad I didn't end the video. So um, the tower. So Mary Magdalene's name, the Mag the Migdal or the Migdala means tower. Okay. And, and this is the rock that he was talking about. So it says banks podium. Okay. Because it's actually, let me explain something to you guys. The body is the man. The spirit is the woman, which you guys know I've, I've, I've been saying the temple represents the body. So inside of the temple, who's supposed to be inside of the temple? It's supposed to be the glory, okay? The Holy Spirit, she's supposed to be inside the temple because the woman is inside of the man. Just like on the outward, the man will go inside of the woman, but on the inward, it's reversed. The woman goes inside of the man and the man's heart, okay? Um, which is where the Holy Spirit resides between, we talked about through the between the heart and the crown space because your wife also represents the crown, right? So, um, sorry, I lost my train of, my, my train of thought really quick. So we're talking about the tower and, um, so the tower say also on plural feminine, Migdala, um, Migdala, from Goodell, a tower from its size of height by analogy, Rostrum figuratively, a pyramidical bed of flowers. Okay, because they are called the the lilies. We've been talking about these hundred and forty four thousand daughters. Castle, flower, tower. Compare the names following. Okay. So it says to grow up, become great, to grow up, become great, advance arrogantly, became great, became greater, became rich, became tall, became wealthy, became arrogant. Now, OK, now I don't know if this is has anything to do with it. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it is. It's the same word. So, magnified. Okay, yeah. Exalt. Exalt her. Exalted. Educated. Enlarged. Great, great things. Grew, 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 grow. Magnificent. Magnified. Magnified. So, yeah. So, that's Tower. Now, let's get the other. Um, tower. And it means an assayer or metals tower and it comes from to examine try to examine try and say examine essay which probably where we get our word essay examine prove test test it test try 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 examine prove temp try trial to test especially metals generally figure of t examine prove temp try trial so um the Messiah said the Holy Spirit, when she come, will try and judge. I don't know if we can get that. I don't know if we can find that because I um, didn't have that pulled up. But maybe you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, but it says the Holy Spirit, when she comes, will try and judge the people. Okay, so uh, tried is one of those words we got there. Now, let's get into the scriptures about the tower. Okay, because the Old Testament say, turn you to the stronghold. Okay, and that's what the Messiah was trying to point uh, point you to. Okay. Turn ye to the stronghold. What is which chapter? Zechariah 9. Okay. Zechariah 
which is the tower, which is Mary Magdalene, which would be the spirit. So it say, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, fill the bow with Ephraim and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as, and made thee as the sword of a mighty woman. Now, hold on. Greece is not where the Vatican is, is it? Let's just check that out right quick. But it could just be talking about that. Oh, Greece. Holy. Oh, oh. I believe that the Vatican is in Italy, right? But it's all the same area. Okay, so I don't want to waste time looking at that. I'll get into that on a later time. But against thy sons, O Greece. Where were we? Yeah, against thy sons, O Greece. And made thee as the sword of a mighty woman. Okay, woman, not man. And the Lord, because these is Zion's sons, the daughter Zion's son, who is the woman in Revelation 12, gives birth to the man child, which is her husband. So we're talking about, again, the husbands and the wives, which is why I keep telling you that these are twin flame uh, marriages. Okay. And made thee as the sword of a mighty woman. And the Lord shall be seen over them. And her arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. Now, this is talking about the daughters, okay? Because it say Psalms 144, let our daughters be polished to the similitude as cornerstones, okay? The, uh, as the corners of the altars. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of her people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon her hand, okay? And the Lord their God shall save them in that day the flock of his people. So the men are being saved by the women. This is what we need to understand. Because people like to say, oh, the Lord's flock is man. Okay, well, and the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of her people. Okay, so as I was saying, mother is working through these daughters to to accomplish this which we've already talked about in multiple videos we're not going you know go over it again for they shall be as stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon her land for how great is her goodness and how great is her beauty corn shall make the young man cheerful and new wine the maids okay so Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Now let's get Micah 4. Because Micah 4 tells us who the stronghold is. Okay, so let's say... Uh, in that day, saith the Lord, I will send for her that haunteth. I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that haunteth a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, Unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why doest thy cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? No king in thee, pregnant woman. Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. 
Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and shalt, and thou shalt even go to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered." And there shall the Lord redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they her counsel, for she will gather them as sheaves into the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thine hoofs brass, and thou shalt be in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. So turn ye to the daughter of Zion, turn ye to the stronghold, okay? The stronghold, ye daughters, the daughters of Zion, the stronghold. So, um, we we probably won't read about Mary Magdalene today, but I've you know you guys can always go read on your own study to show yourself approved. I don't want to have to bring everything. I want you guys to be telling me stuff in the comments. You know, adding to what I know. You know, being my link. You know, <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you know, I I'm, I'm giving you guys an assignment. You go read about her. <laughs> And you come tell me something that I may not have known, okay? How about we do that? Um, yeah, so turn you to the stronghold. So we can see that, and I believe that I was reading a long time ago about it was the Church of Mary Magdalene or something. It's in Russia. The Church of Mary Magdalene, Russian, is a Russian Orthodox church located on the Mount of Olives, directly across the Kidron Valley from the Temple Mount and near the Garden of Gethsemane in East Jerusalem. Look at that Church of Mary Magdalene. That's a beautiful church. It's blue and white, okay? Blue, white, and gold. So it says, the church is part of the convent of St. Mary Magdalene, a sisterhood established in 1936 by an English convert and working under the jurisdiction of the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia. The church was built in 1886 by Cesar Alexander III and his brother to honor their mother, Empress Maria Alexander. Alexandrovna, Alexandrovna, I don't know, of Russia. It was constructed to David Grimm's design in the traditional tinted roof style popular in the 16th and 17th century Russia and includes seven distinctive gilded onion domes. The church is dedicated to Mary Magdalene, the companion of Jesus. According to the 16th chapel of the Gospel of Mark, Mary Magdalene was the first to see Christ after his resurrection. Although equals, she is usually considered a crucial and important disciple of Jesus and seemingly his primary female associate, along with Mary and Bethany, who some believe to have been the same woman. Uh, the relics of the two martyr saints, Grand Duchess Elizabeth of Russia and her fellow nun, Vavara are displayed in the church. In 1982, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia canonized the new martyrs of the communist revolution. And in May, the bodies of Elizabeth and Barbara were moved from the crypt where only private veneration was possible to the upper church of St. Mary Magdalene. Since 1981, Elizabeth and Barbara are venerated as new martyrs by the Orthodox Church in exile at St. Mary Magdalene, Gethsemane. A statue of Elizabeth is among those of the 20th century martyrs above the west door of the Westminster Abbey, installed in 1998. In the changed political situation of the 1990s, the Moscow Patriarch, 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 
a considered recognition of the uh, martyrs of this period, including the members of the royal family. And her status as a saint was also recognized in April 1992 by Moscow. In 1930, Princess Alice of Badenburg, mother of Duke of Edinburgh, visited the church and asked to be buried near her Aunt Ella, the Grand Duchess Elizabeth. She died at Buckingham Palace and her remains were transferred to a crypt below the church. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so I mean, that's pretty much all I wanted to bring to you guys, which was really to focus on um, the Messiah basically telling us that um, Rome, the Vatican, was the gates of hell, okay? So, and that's important for our next video. So, shalom, family. I love you guys. Until we meet again. Mwah.